the second basic writing workshop is all about um, the four types of sentence structures. If you can, come 10 minutes early so we can chit-chat, practice your speaking a little bit, um, get to know each other better. I don't want you to feel like you're learning from a machine and I, I don't want to feel like I'm talking to my wall right here. I don't like talking to walls. Only crazy people do that. Uh, I might be a little bit crazy, but not that crazy. Anyway, we're going to get started with warm-up activities. The riddle is, I cut hair every day, but my hair stays the same. Who am I? Think about it and write the answer in the group chat. And I will reveal the answer at the end of today's class. In order to show you um, why I'm doing basic writing workshops first, and then doing the advanced later is because I'm following this uh, level of progression. In early kindergarten, you learn letters, A, B, C, D, and then you do all sorts of funny crafts with A, B, Cs. And then as you get older, you learn about words. And then that's when you do your spelling. Lower primary school, you level up, you do sentences, you put different words together and you build sentences. For the upper primary, what you do is actually you do paragraph. And in lower secondary, that's when you do your short essays. How many words did you have to write for UPSR? Okay, so I'll put 80 words here. How many words do you have to write for PT3? 120? Okay, so upper secondary school, form 4 and form 5. How many words for SPM? You have to write a minimum of 350 words. How about for a bachelor's degree? How many words do you think you have to write? So for a bachelor's level, for each assignment that you write, you have to write 3,000 to 5,000 words. So it's a big jump, right? From 350 to 3,000. Crazy. Yeah, it's a pretty big jump from primary school to secondary school as well, and from lower secondary to upper secondary. Yeah, at the end of your master degree, you have a thesis. How many words do you think you have to write? 10 to 15,000. Bachelors, 5,000. Boom, big jump. Masters, 10,000. Ha, go crazy. Next level. How many words do you think you have to write for a PhD thesis? 100,000 words. It's another big jump from masters. For PhD, let's say I have a topic. Like I, I want to research what kind of laksa is the best. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend one year searching for articles written about laksa in the past. And I'm going to read all of them and I'm going to summarize all of them. And that's probably like 50,000 words already. And then I'm going to spend the next 30,000 words writing about what I want to do, what kind of research I want to do. So maybe I will go to like a, a, a small village in Pahang. Any of you from Pahang? Laksa Johor. Okay, a small village in Johor. So I'm going to do a research there. Why? Who are the people that I'm going to involve? Blah, 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 blah. blah. So that's 30,000 words. And then another 30,000 words will be the results of my research and what I think the research means, these results mean, and how uh, I can continue or how people can use this into the future. So that's why PhD uh, is 100,000 words and you spend three or four years writing that one essay. So you guys are at, probably at this level um, for PT3, 120 words for SPM, 350 words. Our, our main topic for today are the four types of sentence structures. So we start with simple sentences, have these three things, subject, verb, and object. Subject, akai, verb, likes, object, bamboo. Every sentence in English has at least a subject and a verb. You can also make a simple sentence that has a lot of detail and has a lot of depth and very, very interesting ones. So like this one, somewhat extremely fat akai, hardly even likes, almost barely green bamboo. So in the first example, akai likes bamboo. But in the second example, akai hardly even likes it. So you add one or two words to a sentence, it can completely change the meaning. And if you want to know how to do this, look at the recording for Monday's session. Simple sentences are also what's called an independent clause. An independent clause must have subject, verb, and must be a complete idea. It must have these three things, okay? So let's look at number one. 
I is a subject. Love is a verb. I love cake. Is it a complete idea? Yeah. So number one is an independent clause. Number two, this is a subject. Is is a verb. This is great. Is that a complete idea? Yes. So this is also an independent clause. It's independent. It doesn't need to attach itself to someone. Awesome. Awesome is not a subject, not a verb, but it's a complete idea. Is this an independent clause? No, it's not. After I eat, I is a subject, eat is a verb. Is it a complete idea? No. After I eat what? What? What happened? So this is not an independent clause. Uh, five, the chef cooks. Chef, the chef is the subject, cooks is the verb. Is this a complete idea? Yeah, the chef cooks. That's what he does, right? I can't cook, but my chef can cook, like I have a chef. Six, when I want it. I is a subject, uh, want is a verb. Is it a complete idea? No, it's not. When I want it, when, when I want it, what? what? What's gonna happen when you want it? So this is not an independent clause. We're gonna look at compound sentences. Compound sentences are independent clauses with conjunctions and another independent clause. Let's have some examples of coordinating conjunctions. Can you type it in the group chat? Fanboys, if you are in Form 4 and Form 5, for summary writing, you have five points for language. If you are able to write compound sentences in your summary, as in you, you, know, you can just cut and paste different sentences from the passage and link them together using fanboys. And if you write compound sentences for your summary, you can get like up to three or four in the overall language score. So an example of a compound sentence, Akai likes bamboo, blank. This is where you put the conjunction. He is not hungry. What do you think is a good conjunction for here? Akai likes bamboo, but he is not hungry. Now I have a quiz for you. Akai and Abu like bamboo. Is that a compound sentence? What do you think? Write in the group chat, yes or no? Okay, the answer is no. This is not a compound sentence. This is a simple sentence. A compound sentence needs to have independent clause, two independent clauses connected by a coordinating conjunction. So what are complex sentences? It's a little bit more complicated than the compound sentences. Uh, complex sentences are independent clauses plus subordinate clauses. Okay, the subordinate clause can be at the front or at the back of the independent clause. This is an example. The dog chased him. This is an independent clause, right? You have the dog as the subject, chased as the verb, and this is a complete idea, complete thought. The blue is a subordinate clause because he ran away. Okay, you have he as a subject, ran is the verb, because he ran away, what, what, what? Like, it's not complete. The idea is it's hanging, oh, like hanging in the, in the clouds. Let's look at the second example, which is the same sentence, but with the subordinate clause at the beginning. Because he ran away, the dog chased him. So depending on your focus in your essay, you might want to put the subordinate clause in the beginning or at the end, depending on whether, did you write about the boy or in the previous sentence, or did you write about a dog in the previous sentence? So if you have a lot of complex sentences in your essay, okay, you do it right, <laughs> grammatically correct, then you have a high quality essay and you will um, get higher, higher grade for it. Now I have another quiz here. He ran away and the dog chased him. Is this a complex sentence? So no. He ran away, that's a complete idea. The dog chased him, that's a complete idea. So this is another independent clause. So this is a compound sentence. If you change this with because, then you get a complex sentence. Yep, it's exactly the same as the example that I gave above. All right, what is a subordinate clause? So subordinate clause must have 
these three things. You, have, you need to have subject, you need to have verb, and you need the thing to not be a complete idea. Okay, it needs to depend on something. That's why it's a subordinate, sub. I is a subject, love is the verb. I love cake. Is that a complete idea? Yes, it is. So this is not a subordinate clause. Like this sentence can stand on its own. It doesn't need to connect to something. Because this is great. This subject is verb. Because this is great. What? What because this is great? So this is not a complete idea. So this is a subordinate clause. Awesome. No subject, no verb, complete idea. So it's not a subordinate clause. After I eat, I is the subject, it is the verb. Is it a complete idea? No, it's not. After I eat, what? What? What are you going to do? So this is a subordinate clause. The chef cooks. The chef is the subject, cooks is the verb. It's a complete idea. So no, this is not a subordinate clause. When I want it, when I want it. So I is the subject, want is the verb. When I want it, what, 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 what's going to happen? So this is not a complete idea. So it is a subordinate clause. Last one. So a complex compound sentence is, you know, you guessed it, a complex sentence plus a compound sentence. And uh, it can also be a complex sentence plus a complex sentence with a coordinating conjunction in the middle. So the dog chased him. So this is the independent clause, boom, right here, independent. And this is the dependent clause because he ran away. So this is dependent. And this, the green color is a complex sentence. And what makes the blue a compound sentence? It's because of this thing here. This is the C, C, coordinating conjunction. It was very fast. This is a simple sentence, but because of the coordinating conjunction, this whole thing here is a compound. Because it has a complex sentence at uh, one part of this sentence, so it's a complex compound sentence. Uh, back here, you can also have a complex sentence. So that will make this a complex sentence. Why? Because the dependent clause is after it got angry. Right, let's give it a go. So click the link. It'll take you to this document that I'm showing on my screen. What you should do is right click and click duplicate slide. So it's going to make a copy of the slide and then you write down your name in the, in the duplicate. I'm just going to wrap things up. So we had a riddle earlier today, which is, uh, I cut hair every day, but my hair stays the same. Who am I? And yes, you're right. Barbara, some of you have come back from the first class. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to have you here. And I hope to see you again next Monday for the third class of basic English writing. And if you want to keep in touch, you can hit me up on social media. I'm uh, Jared YJK in Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I'm mostly on Facebook because I'm old. See you. Have a good, good, good weekend. Bye.